Hi everyone, we are back for the new season with Jackie McNamara. Jackie, how has your summer been? Good, thanks, yeah. Uh, good to uh, enjoy the Euros as much as we could, um, certain games, but no, it's nice to see the football starting again, get back into it. I think the last time we spoke to you, we were very downbeat because Scotland had just crashed out of the Euros. It's slightly better today. Celtic didn't get the result we wanted last night, but I thought the performance was quite encouraging. What did you make of it? Yeah, I agree. I thought it was um, you, there were signs there of real positive stuff. I think you know I, I'm not going to lie. I was a bit apprehensive going to the game last night after watching the two games before it, the weekend and the Bristol game. Um, but you know you can see seeing signs there that um, what he wants to do. And I think uh, you know I thought last night was positive. You know a couple of little little bits there. Obviously that it didn't work out, but. You know, I thought um, I thought they played well and a good, a decent performance. Um, you know, I thought they're a far better team. I agree. I, I said that in the live reaction last night. I felt we were a good couple of levels ahead of Meacheland. Um I thought the way we yeah. moved the ball, the chances we created. I think I saw a expected goals thing today that was like they were like zero point one two, and we were way up nearly two. So we we created far better chances. You and what did you make of the game last night overall? I thought we dominated a team that's been pretty effective in Europe for the last three, four years. And after last season's annex, you know, I'm going to take that quite readily. I think the, the difference in intensity between the friendlies, I, I, I was also a bit worried after the friendlies. Uh, I thought maybe this team wasn't prepared enough. Ange Postecoglou himself said that the team wasn't prepared. But I thought we looked really good. Uh, a lot of the, attack, the attacking play that we saw last year was really ponderous, side to side, kind of just relying on a, on a wonder goal from Christy or Turnbull a lot of the time, or just Odson Edward, but it was it was excellent. Different players were getting involved. I think Leo Abada had an excellent debut. I was sad to see him come off. Um, yeah, all in all, just the intensity is up. Having fans back is brilliant. Uh, I know you single-handedly, Hamish, were responsible for a lot of the noise last night, so I want to commend you for that. But uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was, it, was, it, was, it was entertaining. It was great watching Celtic again. And I think that's maybe... You know, that's, that's, that's what we can hope for at this stage, you know. The progress will come later, but for now, we're good to watch again. And that's a huge improvement. Top performers then, guys. I'll, I'll give you three. I thought Callum McGregor was brilliant. He just looks mm -hmm. like he's just warming to be the captain already. Um, I think Scott Brown, when he became the captain all those years ago, he became a much better player almost overnight. He went from the kind of inconsistent Scott Brown to the Scott Brown that would be like a 7 or 8 out of 10 virtually every game and there's signs that Callum McGregor who is quite consistent in his own right is doing that he just looks really quick sharp both mentally and with his feet I thought he was brilliant um, Ryan Christie a guy that you both will know that I wasn't mm -hmm. his biggest fan last season but yesterday I thought he was brilliant his energy was great the Ryan Christie that we we knew and we loved from seasons gone by his end product could still improve final pass, all that kind of stuff, but his energy was brilliant, and I thought Sorrow was great as well, um, just got around the park, quite a kind of unorthodox player, like he never looks as if he's properly got control of the ball, he always looks like he can maybe trip over his feet or give the ball away, but brilliant game, just, you know, Duracell bunny around the pitch. Jackie, do you want to comment on any of them, or do you get any other players that you were impressed by? Uh, no, I, I would agree with him, I, I thought the, the young lad making his debut as well, and getting his goal, um, I felt sorry yeah. for him when he came off because, mm -hmm. you know, it's you go from that to that, you know, in a short that ever happened time. to you in your career? Uh, no, I've been sent off, but, not, <laughs> <laughs> but normally it's defenders are uh, are okay. Yeah. You know, normally forwards are sacrificed in in the, the moments, but you know, I, I liked his um, his positive set everything that he done. You know, he, he does it at pace. He gets sat somebody and. I think we've kind of missed that over the last sort of year, and that that's it's quite infectious around there. And I agree with what you're saying about McGregor. He also, although the, the, it looked like the the two sitting, you know, it was him and Sorrow, but he, he's busting forward there and making mm. things happen. They, they seem to have a, a bit of freedom, which I like. I like I like it when they're all moving around. Even you can see like when they're starting things off, the two two uh, centre backs go wide. And the two full backs were coming in to receive it. Um, I was a bit obviously worried the first time when when Greg kind of miscontrolled it. Um, there and it didn't cost anything, but but again, you can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to get movement all over the pitch and make space for others to to open them up. And uh, 
and I imagine they're only going to get better at it as well, which is which is good, you know. Maybe other players that have started to come in and new signings. Yeah, we'll get on to that later on in the week in our second video. McGregor definitely playing further forward for me, definitely giving more you know, ability to go and impose himself in the game. Jackie, that's something you've been calling out for, you know, as long as we've been doing these. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just think he's got too much, you know, that the cre- the creative side of, of his game. Um he can do both. You know, I, I said many a time last year you actually want McGregor passing the ball to McGregor for the forward. You know, somebody there to do that work, he starts things off, makes it simple. But in that last third, you know, and I get what you're saying about Christie, but that's what separates sometimes. It's just that little bit. It's the decision-making, and Callum, more often than not, makes makes the right decisions. A wee bit like Tumble as well. You know, he makes good decisions. Christie is maybe sometimes trying too hard or, or wanting to, you know, yeah. score a spectacular goal or whatever. But I thought last night, I thought his energy... Especially go down to ten men, you know. When you're we, looking at it, when he was going to change and bring uh, Murray on, who was he going to sacrifice? Um, it shows you why I'm not a manager because I wouldn't have taken him off. I would have taken one of the other ones off uh, and kept kept it and uh, kept his pace on because I just thought, you know, they're two centre backs. You could see it a couple of times there when Edward picked it up in the little pockets, and you could see him running it running out of two centre-backs, you, you could cause problems with pace, which is why they'd probably stayed most of the time in a in a back four, you know, protecting their centre-backs. Ewan, we, we've been getting like a fair few comments from people saying that we're maybe going a wee bit over the top. Certainly last night, we drew 1-1 at the end of the day uh-huh. and we're in a worse position to qualify than we were before the game. The reason I feel so positive, it was just... Like it was a new Celtic. It was a Celtic that looked threatening. You know, Edward was dropping in, as Jackie says, and in general, his link-up play was really good. We had played, you know, the wingers, well, the winger that was on the pitch uh, looked lively. Turnbull looked lively. Christie looked really lively. McGregor looked lively. We got into good areas. It, it was just quite exciting to see a Celtic team with a game plan playing again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think a lot of that came from Ismail Osorio. I think he was outstanding, uh, just pressing everything in the middle so that the, the players ahead of him, like Sam McGregor, uh, got more license to roam uh, and make problems for the opposition. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, at the risk of getting clipped, I still think we have the qualities to beat Micheland away from home. Um, I don't think anyone was underrating them, but at the same time, you know, they're going through their own period of transition. Um, you know, uh, Bo Henriksen, the new manager there, he um, has quite an interesting kind of CV up to now. He's rebuilding his team with, without some pretty key parts, you know, just like us. So, uh, no, I think we have the qualities to go over there and beat them. I think if we play that with that same kind of intensity, then I think we've got a pretty good chance. Um, they're there to be got at. And like you say, Edward, he was winning the, the physical battle in the, in the middle. Um, and he had Christian uh, rejuvenated during Christie, I'd say, uh, him and Abada playing playing off of off Edward. I, th- I thought it was really good, and and yeah, I've got nothing for pre- but praise for last night. You know, it was just so. Uh, it's kind of what we kind of expect from from set like historically. You know, it's um, a kind of gung ho with that attack and play, but also really well organised. Um, uh, you know, in defence too, and uh, you know, no, just just miles better, miles better than even some of our better performances last season. I would say maybe that's getting carried away, but I like to so. Yeah, it's not up against much last season, to be honest, but it, it was yeah, definitely it was night and day. Um, we'll get on to the question about next week in a second. Jackie, I'll, I'll let you take the floor for near Beaton and, and Vasilis Barkas conversation. What, what did you make of their two contributions last night? Yeah, I thought Beaton knew right away at the time. when he, he, I mean, I was sitting behind the, the goal in the other end and I could see his hand going up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, right away, yeah. you're like, even if he's not not really hurt him or done anything, or you know the fact that you put your, your hand there, especially the referees in Europe, you know you're you're asking the question, and I know he came out afterwards and apologised, and, and it was stupid and everything else. But you know the heat of the moment, I've done stuff myself. You know, be hypocrite to you know to to say uh, you know he's done this and done that. I've I've done things there that you can't explain in the pitch. Um, the heat of the moment, it, I, I can understand that, but. Yeah, it was frustrating because I thought we were on top and looking good. You know, just a, a kind of setback uh, at that time in such an important game as well. Um, expect do, do, maybe more. Do you think he maybe forgot he was on a booking? Because that was the only thing going through my mind that could explain it. Possibly. I mean, even his, his booking, I thought, was 
was kind of he was in the wrong place, you know, um, before that, even leading up to the the, the second one. You know, he, he was switched on earlier, reminiscent at the time when he got sent off at, at Ibrox and that little yeah. bit there, because that's the only concern when, when he's playing there, and that left centre half role is the bit in behind him. You know, because if he doesn't win that first ball, there's an opportunity that they could expose him with pace in behind. Um, and, you know, it was the two, the two bits there that when he, he, the guy rolls him and he gets his first yellow. And the second one, obviously he's cheated and dived, but, you know, a missed time one could have been a penalty as well because he was on the wrong side of him at that point. Um, so maybe a bit of frustration with that. And then the goal, you know, as I said, I was stand, sitting right behind the, the equaliser and just like double take. It wasn't until afterwards till I watched it back, you know, on the TV after the game, you, you realise how even when he they, they addressed the ball, I thought it was a harsh free kick to start mm. with. You know, I thought Wales should win the ball, although some of these referees, they don't allow it, you know, when you go to ground and you kind of take both the, the, the ball and the man. Obviously, he's given the three kick and he shouldn't be scoring for there for that angle. Does the faith of a defender go a bit in his goalkeeper when you see him letting in goals like that? Yeah, I, I mean, as a defender, you have, you have a, you know, when your keeper's on form, you know, you can just, if a, a ball comes into your box, you can just sort of look and then, you know, sort of turn around and get, start walking back in position out wide. Yeah, you know it's going to be in his hands. You have that kind of aura, but with with Barkas, even one last night, the referee gave him a yeah. free kick uh, just before it. You know, and didn't look convincing. He wasn't convincing, and he's, he's maybe suffering still confidence for last year. He had, I thought he had a couple of good saves against Preston, and you're hoping that that's going to sort of kickstart his Celtic career and having fans back as well. But you know, last night it was obviously a massive setback for him. And the faith shown with the, the supporters are watching it. You and what about that faith in both Barkas and Beaton? Can, can we continue to play these guys when you know they've both let us down a number of times over the last you know couple of well eighteen months or so? I think it's, it speaks volumes that, that Beaton is only played as a centre back in an absolute emergency, and I don't think last night was because we, obviously you know they've got these young guys, but they're not going to get a better chance than. You know, a game like that to really uh, make their mark. I think you know, Dane Murray showed how good he was. Um, I think the best thing about essential defensive performance is when you, you don't really think about it much as it's happening. It's just so well organised. He's not up to make last ditch tackles that kind of thing. Uh, Beaton does. He doesn't have the the physical attributes to be a, a centre back. I don't think he just hasn't got that pace to get the right side of his man. Um, and we saw that against Rangers. We've seen that in you know other qualifiers. We've seen that in Europe. We've seen that. And we saw that last night. So. No, no, Hans the guy. I just I think he's a he's a holding midfielder, and I don't think he's ever been you know an actual centre back, and I think that shows whenever we play him. Uh, as for Barkas, I just desperately want to do well, so I don't know what the answer is here because yeah. you know we saw last year that if if your goalie makes a howler and you drop them immediately, or even if they don't make a howler and you drop them, that confidence just goes. So um, I'm not going to second guess Ange Postecoglou because who am I? But like you know, it's. Um, it's an interesting decision for him to make, and I, I think all that confidence we had after a couple of pieces and friendly is about. Well, maybe we don't need a uh, a new first team goalkeeper. I think that's something that Ange probably will have to invest in, you know, to get the best out of the squad. So it's a shame. I just feel sorry for the guy at this point because um, he's had so many false starts, and you know, you just want him to be a good player. So like I think you said this last night, Hamish, like you want him for the price that we paid him, and you know, for all his, you know, all he comes across, you want him to do well. So. No, it was disappointing. Uh, I do think it was a good free kick, though. I think that's kind of forgotten in all this. Like, it would have been a difficult save to make, but, like, um, it's still one you should have made. So, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, I think he's he's probably got one more mistake in him. I hate to say it, but, but you know, if he makes one more, I think a lot of fans, a lot of fans are already calling for him to be out of the team, but those voices will just get louder. And I think the way Postacoglu manages, you'll, you'll have to make a big decision. Um Next week then, in the past, Jackie, 1-1 at home was a bad result because away goals were in force. Obviously, when I came out of the game last night, I was thinking, right, we need to go over there and win, which is true, but so do they. I mean, if the scores stay the same, we're going to penalties, we're going all of that stuff. How do you feel about next week? Yeah, even, as I said, even with, with 10 men against their 11, 
you know, I thought um, I wasn't concerned. You know, I think that was a disappointing thing. I think they had one one shot and it just went past the near post. Yeah, not it was long a guy before who scored. The, yeah, yeah, um, it was a great strike. To be fair, you know the kind of movement on the ball, but I don't think they created anything. Um, I thought they tried to win three kicks, and uh, you know that would be my only concern is set pieces. That would be better like last season. You know, he didn't, he didn't really carve his open and the big lad up front was powerful and tried to bring people into play. Um, but, you know, I'm, again, I probably like everybody else watching last night, I wasn't scared about going into the game next week or overly concerned about it because I think it will be a, another week um, better, you know, in terms of getting games with West Ham at the weekend um, and then more work with the players and what he wants and sharper and fitter because I think some... Some of them are still a little bit uh, sharpness to come. You know, Ralston, you can see he's not played a lot of football. You know, it's just 60 minutes. I thought he was starting to struggle a little bit uh, physically. You know, that one with the header that came at the back post, I don't know what he was trying to do with it. But you could see... Oh, yeah, yeah. The one that kind of dropped. And yeah. <laughs> it worked out all right in the end. But, uh, yeah, again, it's obviously it's not ideal for him because he's not played a lot of football in the last... Well, a couple of years really, you know, and it's to go in straight into it. Um, you need more games and more more sharpness. Right, final thing I wanted to mention on the video, just Postecoglou's comments after the game. Really refreshing to hear a manager taking ownership of the situation, um, and after the game as well, saying that you know we're underprepared and that was down to him. Um, he seems like quite a likable guy, Jackie, and I think this, the Celtic fans are going to kind of go with Ange on this one, we're going to get behind him and we're going to go into battle with him. Yeah, yeah, he seems to be quite um, quite honest and quite uh, open with, with his comments and I think people relate to that. You know, you know, if it's a, he doesn't seem to be much of a spin doctor, you know, he take responsibility. Um, I think if it hadn't been right and I don't think he would have got the blame at this stage you know, because the yeah. players aren't there. But again, I think that's an important bit as well. You could get players in tomorrow and then the next day, but it's important they're the right ones. You know, they've, they've brought some young players in from from Sheffield, and that you know they would need a lot of time to settle into the the way he wants to play. You know, they're they're not going to get the finished article at this moment. Um, the other ones that he's looking at have been linked with. It's quite clear that you know he needs to strengthen in certain areas, and it's important they get the right ones. Otherwise, it's just going to be the same again and changing it. Uh, you know, a, a little bit of time into it. So it is important. It does take time, not just identifying the players, but getting it over the line, getting the deals done, getting the everything correct. So hopefully, the, you know, the, they'll do that. And as if by magic, Jackie is thrown forward to the video from later on in the week when we're going to be talking transfers, we're going to be looking at all the positions we need to strengthen. Guys, thanks very much. Thanks everyone for tuning in and watching this. Remember to subscribe and like the videos and we'll speak to you soon.